take one. Edited copy. Irene Rutland is 45 years old, a widow with one daughter. She's a successful public relations officer with a large publishing firm, a respectable All member stand. of the community. In fact, she never put a foot wrong until one evening in November, when, after a long and tiring day at the office, she decided to eat out with disastrous consequences. Irene Mary Rutland, you stand indicted on four counts. On the first count, you are charged with wounding with intent, contrary to Section 18, Offences Against the Person Act, 1861, in that on the 16th of November, 1973, at Fulchester, you wounded Raymond Arthur Mugridge with intent to do him grievous bodily harm. How say you? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. On the second count, you are charged with wounding with intent, contrary to Section 18 of the Offences Against the Persons Act, 1861, in that on the 16th of November 1973 at Fulchester, you wounded Raymond Arthur Mugridge with intent to resist your lawful apprehension. How say you? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. On the third count, you are charged with theft, contrary to the Section 1 of the Theft Act 1968, in that on the 16th of November 1973 at Fulchester, you stole a handbag and £15 contained therein, the property of Linda Margaret Brightson. How say you? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. On the fourth count, you are charged with damaging property, contrary to Section 1 of the Criminal Damage Act 1971, in that you, on the 16th of November 1973 at Fulchester, without lawful excuse, damaged an ornamental table lamp, a table, a chair, four glasses, four plates, two cups and saucers, one Kona set and one cruet set, belonging to Spiros Plotinos intending to damage such property or being reckless as to whether such property would be damaged. How say you? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Members of the jury, to these four counts the defendant has pleaded not guilty and it is your charge to say, having heard the evidence, whether she be guilty or not. You may sit down. Mr O'Connor. My Lord, members of the jury, I appear for the prosecution in this case, and my learned friend, Mr. Lotterby, represents the defence. This is a somewhat complicated case in that the offences took place on two separate venues, but on the same evening. The train of events came to light when a police officer was called to the Kyrenia restaurant in Bridwell Road, Fulchester, to investigate a complaint by the owner, Spiros Platanos. I call Constable Mugridge. In what condition did you find the defendant? The defendant was sitting at a table in a distressed state. Was she drunk? Uh, well, that's difficult to say. She was certainly flushed and emotional. And there was a smell of whiskey. And what about the restaurant itself? That was in a most disorderly condition. Chairs and tables upturned, broken glass and crockery everywhere. Who else was present? The proprietor, Mr. Platanos, and a waitress. Is that all? Yes. And, of course, it was their complaint to the police which had resulted in your going to the restaurant. Yes. As a result of my investigations, I asked the defendant to accompany me to the police station. She became angry and made as if to hit Mr. Platanos. As a result, I told her I was arresting her. And then what happened? As we were about to leave, the waitress handed me a lady's handbag, which... Oh, may we be sure on the handbag? It's marked Exhibit 1. Is that it? Yes, sir. Go on, Constable. I asked the defendant if the bag was hers, and she said it was not. The waitress said she had found it under the accused's table. I again asked the defendant if the bag belonged to her. She denied it and became angry. And uh, how did this anger manifest itself? She hit out with the shoulder bag she was carrying. Oh, perhaps it can be shown the other bag. It's marked two. Uh, is that it? Yes. Go on, please. Then she made for the door. Uh, but before she did that, what happened when she swung the shoulder bag? It hit me, coming into contact with my face and drawing blood. What was your reaction to this? 
I was surprised. It's a big bag, but the force of it was out of all proportion. So what sort of injury did it inflict? My nose was cut and bruised. I was stunned. Were you able to continue your inquiries? Oh, yes. At my suggestion, the waitress brought some ice cubes in a towel, and that helped stop the bleeding. And later? At the station, the police surgeon was called, and I was sent to hospital. Uh, what happened there? They x-rayed my nose and put three stitches in it. Uh, was it broken? Yes, sir. Uh, my lord, uh, as Exhibit 3, I introduce an agreed document, a medical report, confirming those injuries. You have a copy in front of you, I believe. To return to the restaurant, what happened after you'd recovered? I opened the defendant's shoulder bag to see what could have given it such force. And amongst the contents, I found a bottle of wine. Uh, that's it there. Exhibit 4, my lord. I then took Mrs. Rutland to the police station, where I cautioned her and charged her with wounding and damage to property. She made no reply. Later, she was released on bail. Did you search the defendant? I searched her bag, yes, sir. Amongst the contents on her, I found a purse containing £12.80. I see. How was this made up? Two £5 notes, two £1 notes, and the rest in 80 pence in silver and copper. Right. And what happened about the handbag found in the restaurant? As a result of further investigations, I again interviewed Mrs. Rutland the following day. She accompanied me to the police station, where I cautioned her and charged her with the theft of the handbag. She said she had never seen it until the waitress had produced it the night before. Thank you, Constable. You say the defendant was in a distressed and emotional state and there was a smell of whiskey? Yes, sir. Were there any other signs of drunkenness? Well, uh... Or was his speech slurred, for instance? No. No, not really. And she was fully in control when she came to the police station? Yes, sir. So you couldn't really say that she was drunk? I mean, apart from being emotional and distressed, was not entirely surprising under the circumstances. There were no real signs of drunkenness, were there? I suppose not. I couldn't really say there were. No, thank you. Now, Constable, you must have been in a bit of a state yourself. Uh, blow on the nose, blood everywhere. Yes, sir. Did Mrs. Rutland show remorse for what, albeit accidentally, she'd done to you? She apologised, sir. She was most upset, in fact. She was sorry for what she had done. Yes, I'm sure she was. She didn't admit any of the charges, did she? No, sir. She frequently and strenuously denied them, in fact. She denied them, sir. And, of course, you were not present when the alleged damage to property took place. No, sir, but the place was in a most disorderly condition. But you had no proof as to who had caused the damage? There was no one else there. How long did it take you to get to the Kyrenia from the time you received the call? About five minutes. Five minutes. Time for someone to leave without your noticing? Possibly. Did you search the premises on arrival? Sir? Did you search the rest of the premises? No, sir. Now, when did you tell the defendant you were arresting her? The precise time, sir. At what point of the proceedings? Refresh my memory for me, will you? It was after she had made as if to hit Mr. Platinos. Now, you're sure it was Mr. Platinos and not yourself? Sir? Mightn't you be mistaken? You've said yourself that you were in great pain, stunned. Mightn't you have confused the timing? Definitely not, sir. The police quite rightly take a very serious view of attacks upon their colleagues, do they not? Upon anyone. But particularly uh, against their own people. We are in a more vulnerable position. Agreed. And they are inclined to award um, commendations to those people who uh, prove vulnerable during the course of their duty and are attacked. Is that not so? In certain cases. In your case, Constable, in March of last year, when you sustained an injury whilst in pursuit of a suspected thief. Later convicted. Exactly. Congratulations. But then conviction is, uh, of course, essential, is it not? And you received a commendation from the Chief Constable? Yes, sir. Very helpful to a young officer on his way up the promotion ladder? No, sir. No? Well, you're not going to tell us it would hinder your chances, are you? To be promoted, you first have to pass your exams. I have not passed mine yet. But when you do, surely a commendation or two will help you on your way. I would not go out of my way to get injured, sir, just for that. Hmm. Or commit perjury. So, you say you arrested Mrs. Rutland before your injury was incurred. Why? Because I had reason to believe that the defendant had caused a breach of the peace in threatening Mr. Platinos. Tell me, how exactly were you hit by that shoulder bag? Uh, the defendant swung it well, round. Perhaps you might use the actual bag.
Something like that, my lord. It's a bit low, isn't it? How did it hit your nose? I was bending down. Oh, were you? Why? Well, I'd lost my cap coming through the beat curtains. Oh, I see. And, of course, it was of paramount importance for you to regain your cap. Tell me, you believed uh, Mrs. Rutland intended to wound you? She must have known it would do some harm, yes. And yet, faced by this emotional woman, you bend down to pick up your cap, thereby giving her ample, ample opportunity to attack you. Well, I find that most difficult to believe, My Constable. Lord, of course it is not necessary to prove intent to wound that the defendant was intending to prevent or resist arrest. But we know that she had already been arrested and was going quite willingly to the police station. And perhaps my learned friend can explain why she ran to the door. Well, I have pondered on that point myself, or rather why she has been accused of so doing. My Lord, um, perhaps I might be allowed to continue my cross-examination. Of course. Mr O'Connor, you can make your speech later, you know. Yes, my Lord. I am obliged, my Lord. Now, Constable, when uh, you entered the restaurant, do you recall the door being locked behind you? I don't think so. Well, I'm afraid you must be more definite than that. I cannot be sure, sir. Well, my client will say it was not locked. Now, you say you were stunned by the blow. How long do you think you were semi-conscious? Not really semi-conscious, sir, just stunned. You were saying you were still aware of what was going on? Yes. Blood everywhere, in great pain. Well, you would agree you were somewhat distracted? A bit, perhaps. Yes. Now, you say the waitress had gone to the kitchen for the ice. What was Mr Platinus doing? He had fetched a clean towel and was making a pad of it to staunch the flow of the blood. So everybody was busy? Everybody except Mrs Rutland? You see, if the door was not locked, and if she had been contemplating evading arrest, she had the perfect opportunity, did she not? She could have escaped if she'd wanted to, couldn't she? There was no one to stop her, was there? And yet she stayed in the restaurant helping to staunch the flow of your blood. Now, this handbag. Did you notice it in the restaurant before the waitress handed it to you? No, sir. So you took the waitress's word for it that the handbag had been found by the table at which Mrs. Rutland had been sitting, still there, although in your own words the place was in a most disorderly state. There was no one else there. Oh, we have already been into that. It means nothing at all. Anyone could have left that handbag in the restaurant at any time that evening. But Constable, I'm sure we all of us sympathise with you over this painful injury. But you must admit that the rest of your evidence is, to put it mildly, somewhat circumstantial. My lord, really. Thank you, Constable. That is all. Does your lordship have any questions? I call Spiros Platonos. Spiros Platonos, please. What religion are you? Uh, Greek Orthodox. Take the Bible in your right hand and re repeat the words on this card. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You are Spiros Socrates Platonos? Yes. You are the proprietor of the Kyrenia restaurant, Bridwell Road, Fulchester, and you live above the premises. Will you tell us what happened on the night of the 16th of November? Well, I'm in the kitchen cooking when my girl comes in and she tells me that... Uh, we will hear your waitress's version later. But uh, as a result of what she told you, you went out into the restaurant. Yes. And there is this woman going off about the bill. She says it's too much. And was it? Two pound 30p for a big steak, chips, salad, everything, and two big whiskies. Uh, thank you, Mr. Platinos. My lord, I introduce as exhibit five the bill. Uh, you have a copy in front of you. Yes. Is yeah. that the bill? 
Yes, yes. You explained the charges to her? Of course. And then what happened? She goes mad. She starts to break the place, smashing everything. So my girl calls the police. Then when the policeman arrives, she goes mad again. She tries to hit me, he stops her, and she hits him. You should have seen him. What a mess. Curious. Well, it didn't happen exactly like that, did it, Mr. My Lord, really? Um, Leading witnesses is against the rules, Mr. O'Connor, even if they happen to be foreign by birth. With the respect, my Lord, if I left the uh, witness's evidence as it was, it'd be far more damning for the defendant. Very well. Uh, Perhaps a little rephrasing? Why do you think the woman tried to hit you? Because she is angry, she is drunk, she does not like me for calling the police. And after she tried to hit you, what happened then? My girl gives the handbag to the policeman and she hits him. Her, I mean. How did she do that? With a handbag. May we see exhibit two? That's it. It's still got Thank you. Please stay where you are, Mr. Platinos. (coughs) Mr. Platinos, why, if Mrs. Rutter had made such a fuss, why do you think she paid the bill? She got to pay the bill. Oh, really? Anyway, she makes the fuss after she pays the bill. She was still objecting. Then why had she paid? Did you perhaps threaten her? Oh, threatened? No, no, no. Was anyone else in the restaurant at the time? Not when she makes the trouble. Was when she came in. Was when she came in? Yes, but they leave before she starts to make all the fuss. How many meals did you serve that evening? Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, 10, 20, 30? Maybe 10. And your restaurant seats how many? Twelve tables. Twelve tables. That's maybe 50 people have squeezed in. Maybe. It depends. And yet on Friday night, for most places a busy night, you only serve ten meals. Is your business doing well, Mr. Platinos? Now, what is that supposed to mean? I said, Mr. Goodbye. Nobody can afford to eat out anymore. Three-day week, unions, no electricity. People cannot afford to eat out anymore. Thank These days, you, it's very... Mr. Platinos. In fact, you need every penny you can get, do you not? Everybody needs every penny they can get, even you. But it does make it that little bit more tempting to overcharge, doesn't it, Mr. Platinos? Just that little bit more tempting to add those extra pennies to the bill? Mm -hmm. I am an honest man. I do not do that. I run a good restaurant, I serve good food. Oh, I'm sure you do, Mr. Platinos. Platonos. So no one witnessed the incident? My girl witnessed it. Yes, you keep referring to my yes. girl. To so whom are you referring? Charlie, my waitress. I see, your girl. She works for me. But no independent she witness. She is independent witness. One last question. When the policeman entered the restaurant, did you lock the door behind him? There is no need. I only locked the door to keep her there until he arrived. So whilst you and the waitress were attending to the policeman's bloody nose, she could have escaped if she wanted to, couldn't she? Thank you so much, Mr. Platinum. Well, she come in and I took her order, served her a scotch while she was waiting, then a steak, then another scotch. So, uh, when did she make the fuss? Oh, my Lord. Uh, when did you realise that something was wrong? Well, after I gave her the bill, she called me back, said it was too much. What did you do? Well, I totted it up again, but it was right. She said she wanted to see the manager, so I went out back and told him and he came out. Would you tell us what happened then? Well, she told him it was too much too, and he said it wasn't. Did she seem angry? Yeah, very. Now, did you ever hear him threaten her? No. He's harmless, really. Now, after the defendant paid the bill, what did you see then? Well, he bring back her change and they start arguing again about the tip or something, I don't know. Then she starts knocking everything about. So I called the police. Yes, we've heard what happened when the policeman arrived in the restaurant and how you handed him a handbag that you'd found. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Uh, Where did you find it? By the table where she was sitting. I thought it was hers. When did you first notice it there? Just then, when they were going out. Thank you, Miss Flint. Miss Flint, you're not married, are you? If I was, I'd be Mrs., wouldn't I? But you do have a child. Yeah. You live with your parents? Yes. Would you tell us how much you earn? About £18 a week, and then there's tips. Yes. How much did you make in tips in the week in question? Don't know. Not much. Weeks previously? Not much. No, it would be true to say, would it not, that the amount you earned in tips had fallen off so drastically in recent weeks that you'd been forced to take another daytime job? 
Yeah. So like Mr. Platonos, you needed every penny you could get. What are your relations with Mr. Platonos? What do you mean? <clears throat> well, I mean, has he ever made advances to you? Advances? Has he ever asked you to sleep with him? Well, he uh, hinted at it, you know. So he is quite fond of you? Oh, I don't know about that. He might seek to ingratiate himself with you? What do you mean? Well, I mean to the extent that he might lie for you, to carry favour with you, perhaps uh, cover up for your overcharging of a customer. What do you mean, overcharging? You say Mrs Rutland seemed angry with your employer. Now, what about him? Was he angry with her? Well, he just got a bit... aerated. They do, don't they? Aerated? Would you please explain, aerated? Well, you know. No, I don't. That's why I'm asking you to explain. Well, sort of upset. Well... Up in the air a bit. Up in the air a bit, I see. Now, you said they do, don't they? Now, what did you mean by that? Well, they're not like us. They don't mean it. Who? Who is they? Foreigners. You don't want to take any notice. You know a lot of foreigners, do you? In the restaurant business. So they nearly all are. You'll be used to them, understand their ways. Yeah, they're all right. Other people might not be used to them, might not understand their ways, might not realise that you shouldn't take any notice, might perhaps get a little frightened when one of them gets a bit aerated. Yes? He's not bad. Here, you're twisting it. You say you thought the handbag you found belonged to Mrs Rutland. Why? It was where she was sitting. But you already had one. Well, that's more like a shopping bag. All right. Did you notice the handbag when she first came in? I wasn't looking. Oh, the restaurant was almost empty, but you didn't notice? I was serving the other table. I see. Where exactly was the bag placed? Under the table. Well, might it not have skidded there during the scuffle? Leaning up against the leg. Oh, so it was still balanced up against the leg of the table at which the whole incident occurred. In the midst of chaos, this one object remained undisturbed. The telephone call you made to the police, why did you do that? Did Mr. Platonos ask you to? No, he didn't. Did he quite independently? Yeah. It's hardly your place to do that, was it? Well, it's always best to. Always? Well, when people cut up rough. You get a lot of trouble in the restaurant, then? Well, no, n not a lot. More drunks and things. So you're used to it? Yeah. Mm. You always call the police? They can handle it. Handle what? One woman arguing over the bill? I should have thought you and Mr. Platonos could have handled that. She was raving. Why Stuff was flying everywhere. Why did Mr. Platonos make the call? He couldn't, could he? He was dealing with her. Oh, so she wasn't doing all the knocking about herself? He was trying to stop her. And you were frightened, were you? Yeah, glass nearly hit me. You've always been used to calling the police when trouble started, and you did it this time. Yes. It was too late to back down then, wasn't it? You had to have a good story ready for the police when they arrived, didn't you? Otherwise, they might not come another time, when you would really need them. Bloody hell. The case of the Queen against Rutland will be resumed tomorrow in the Crown Court. <laughs>